Well, good evening, friends, and uh, welcome to this edition of Virtual Vespers for the 15th of April. Uh, as you probably notice, I'm not in the corner of my office, but instead, this evening I've decided to come to you from, well, the room I hope that looks familiar to you, our sanctuary. It's, uh, I know it's been an, a while for some of us since we met in this place, and so my thinking tonight was, well, let's, let's meet together in here, even if we're only doing it virtually. And I have to tell you, it's, it's a little strange to be here in the room by myself at this hour, when I'm so used to being just a few feet over there in the pulpit, looking out at you and greeting you on Sunday mornings, reading from Holy Scripture and proclaiming the Word of God. It's a little strange, but not that strange, because for me, when times are normal, there's usually, oh, about one day in the week when I make my way down from my office into this room, and I walk down the aisles, I stand in the pulpit, walk around the pews, and eventually settle down in one of the pews where I spend some time in prayer. Usually I pray for whomever's going to sit on that pew the next Sunday morning. I pray for whoever sits in front or behind, whoever sits on that side of the sanctuary, for all those who gather to fill these pews on Sunday morning. I pray for them. And then I just sit in the silence, in the stillness, and listen. Sometimes it's a few moments, other things begin to crowd my mind, and I leave this room and walk back to my office. And sometimes it's for a while longer. I think about all that's happened in this room, even in the times that I've been here, the number of people we've said goodbye to in this room, the number of times we've rejoiced together in this room, as those have come down to express their faith in Christ, their decision to join our church through baptism or just to be a part of what we're doing here as Christ Church at Williams. The number of times we've watched young couples unite in marriage here in this room. Or just the number of times we've heard our favorite hymns sung, our favorite passages of scripture read. We've watched our children grow as they sing in the children's choir, or read scripture, or even find their way into the adult choir. I thought about this room, about how I miss hearing Marilyn play the piano, and how I know we all still miss hearing George on the organ, and Miss Haley now playing for us. Some of us miss Pat. Pat, if you're watching, that was a joke. We miss Pat and Linnell and the choir as they sing. It's been a while. But I trust that the days are coming sooner rather than later when we'll be together again in this room for worship. And so tonight I wanted to bring our virtual Vespers here in the sanctuary. Before we get into that, get really started, I, I always want to make just a few announcements uh, for you, some updates about what's happening. Now first, uh, hopefully you're still receiving our Williams Worship on the Web, that interactive uh, worship guide, either through the email uh, server or through Facebook uh, here. I want to make you aware that this Sunday's is going to look a little different. We're hoping to continue to sort of streamline this, um, this worship experience as best we can. So rather than sending you just an interactive guide with links you'll click on and click back to the guide, um, Pat and Linnell have worked to, to record some, some, and some videos for our songs to lead us in worship. Chris Cheatwood, again, uh, d doing just great work, has helped us. I was going to help us stitch some of these separate videos together into one uh, cohesive uh, worship experience. Now it'll still be a little different. You'll still have to click in uh, to see things like the moment for the younger church. But uh, frankly, I've been getting a lot of joy out of those. I've told Nikki, I just think they're great. 
Um, and you'll still see a few printed things there as we haven't had a chance to, to sort of record some audio or visual or, or video to stitch together with the rest of that. So that's going to look a little different. We've been doing sort of a, a rollout of some of this here on Facebook uh, over the last couple of Sundays where you've seen, uh, if you've watched online here, a video of, say, uh, our scripture call to worship and then the sermon. This will be like that, but a more full, robust experience, very similar uh, to what we would have here in the sanctuary. Uh, I said today in an email to Pat, my hope is that right as soon as we get this down, we won't need it anymore and we'll be able to gather together. But just in the meantime, we're working towards making that a more cohesive and uh, more, say, user-friendly experience for you. Also, I want to let you know, it's just uh, you're doing, continuing to do a great job in supporting the church with your gifts and things. I want to let you know, I know some of you have been using our online giving, and that's, that's great. We're still having a, a little bit of an issue uh, connecting our account there. It's a PayPal account to our present bank. And most of that is just because that account lay dormant for a while. Some of it's because uh, with COVID-19 and some of those restrictions, it's difficult to get, frankly, get anybody on the phone to help us out. So you can continue to give that way, but no, um, your gifts will make the most immediate uh, uh, sort of impact or way into our accounts by just dropping them off here at the church. I know a lot of people have been doing that to just kind of get out of the house or mailing them into us. But either way, we appreciate all you've been doing and continue to support your church financially through your prayers and support. I can't I can't say how how encouraged I am by that and, and your willingness to continue uh, in your faithfulness to our church that way. Also, I want to make you uh, aware, I've said this the last couple of weeks, but again, if you'd like to record a short video or a portion for our upcoming worship services. We're probably going to be doing some more recording for those either this time next week or the week after. Uh, if you'd like to be a part of that, if you'd want to read some scripture, say a prayer, be a part of that Williams Worship on the Web video we're going to be putting together, let me know. Either send us a message here on Facebook, call me, contact me here at the church office. Uh, we'd really like to see more and more people involved in that uh, as we're all to, separate together to see more people than just, frankly, than just my face. Uh, and then just uh, um, a couple other things. One, I want to say help us help you. Uh, as this week I've been calling around making some uh, contact with folks we haven't seen or heard from in a while just to see how everyone's doing and, and sometimes that's difficult because we catch you when you're not home or they get you an answering machine or you know we live here where cell service is sometimes a phantom thing but if you need anything my hope is you'll reach out to us here at the church office you can contact me directly or of course contact your your family deacon if there's anything you need as far as someone to, to maybe run to town for you do those sorts of things please don't hesitate uh, to let us know and the final thing I want to say uh, I've been uh, watching the news this week, as I'm sure you have, watching some of it anyway, uh, and there seems to be some cautiously optimistic news out there regarding uh, this COVID-19 pandemic as states are now uh, sort of coming together to talk about maybe reopening uh, their states, what that looks like, uh, what kind of procedures they may put in place as that happens. I know I've read about countries around the world who are now really starting to see uh, new cases of the coronavirus slowing. Even this morning, I think it was Taiwan that had reported no new cases of this virus. So there, there's some hopeful and, like I said, cautiously optimistic news out there. And we continue to monitor that, to listen to it, to see uh, you know, when, when we'll be able to sort of think again about a, a time when we will be able to come together. Uh, my prayer is, and I hope it's yours too, not that we reopen and get everything back to normal as soon as we can, but that we genuinely uh, do what's best and safest uh, for all of our people, uh, both in our community and around the world, as we think about uh, ways to move forward. Because when it's over, this is certainly not going to be just a back to normal as much as it will be, a, okay, we're much more aware of, of these sorts of things now and how do we um, how do we move forward in this not how do we find normal I guess so those are the things I wanted to bring you up to speed on there uh, again you'll find other information uh, here on our Facebook page we are having 
our uh, monthly food pantry distribution will be this Friday. Last month we sent that out uh, in a mailer that it would be next Friday, but we're going to be doing that this Friday. Now our plan right now is if we we hold it Friday and our usual folks come and people come who need that, great. We've done we've done what we need to do. We've communicated that, and people have gotten the food and the things that they need. If uh, for some reason we have a feeling that, well, maybe our usual folks didn't show up, maybe people didn't get the message, uh, and we have food left over or we need to buy more, uh, we will attempt to do that again next Friday. But again, you'll hear about that after the food pantry distribution this Friday as to whether or not we will hold sort of a supplementary one um, next week. Since, and only since, uh, we sent that out in the mailer in our in our groceries last month. So be aware of that if you help with that, if you're a part of that. Uh, just keep that in mind uh, as we move forward this week. Well, those are all of the sort of updates I have for you uh, this evening. But as we come together for just a brief time of prayer and reflection, uh, let us begin with a prayer of invocation. Holy God, we are thankful for just the way that you continue to look after us, the way you continue to provide for us. Lord, we're thankful for this space, this holy place, this sanctuary we have. Lord, we know we haven't been able to be here in a while, but God, we trust there's coming a day soon when we'll be together again to sing your praises, to greet one another with love, to hear from your word, and to continue, Lord, to be called into this life of faith and discipleship. And God, here in the midst of this week, as we pause for a time of prayer and reflection, we trust that you're with us. We trust that you're in our virtual presence, Lord, however that may be, whether it's here live, whether it's sometime later watching this recording. God, we trust that you're with us, uniting our hearts and minds together as your church, both here at Williams and around the world. So Lord, be with us the rest of this evening, the rest of this week, as we continue to wait, as we continue to hope, as we continue to trust. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Let's hear now, as we've been doing over these last few weeks, to hear from the psalm for this Sunday, Psalm 16. Protect me, O God. For in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, in whom, all my, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we enter a time of prayer. And as we've been doing in these uh, meetings, these virtual vespers, I want us to pray in sort of three sort of phases. First, prayers for the church. We're only just three days removed from the most unique and unprecedented Easter in the history of the church. A friend of mine reminded me, though, this week that as strange as it was, it holds nothing, nothing to the first Easter. When those disciples who thought that all hope was gone, all hope was lost, nailed and crucified, it came back, rose from the dead. Here we are as Christ Church meeting virtually here at Williams and around the world. And I wonder in what ways we'll find ourselves rejoicing in the good news when we're able to 
as the body of Christ rise up out of our homes and gather together once more in our holy spaces and our sanctuaries. I hope you'll pray for our church and for the church around the world as we continue to gather together, as we continue to hold together as Christ's church, as we realize in these strange and odd times what really matters and what is all just extra. So I hope you'll pray for the church. And remember to pray for others. I've been thinking about this now as this continues to carry on. That I think in those first weeks, first days, that my concern was those who were getting this COVID-19, who were contracting this coronavirus, that they would survive. And that's still there. That's still very much a real thing. There are those who are still recovering in ICUs, those who are still clinging and hoping. But as I've been carrying on now, I've noticed more and more that, you know, there's still the normal things of life. Uh, a friend of mine here on Facebook, an older friend, has his wife is having to go into the hospital for a few days, and he's unable to be with her. And it's just tearing him up, doesn't know what to do. I don't know if it had really crossed my mind that even in the midst of a pandemic, even the, the sort of bad things of life, carry on and so I, I hope tonight as we pray for others we pray for those who are still experiencing grief and loss whether it's related to COVID-19 or not and how when this is all over how we might be able to serve them to love them to walk alongside them even though we can't now so that's for the church, for others, and then, of course, for yourself. How are you doing? Really, how, how are you doing? It's been a weird, weird time. And I think I felt strangest this past Sunday. And for the first time in at least 14 years, I wasn't standing in the pulpit to preach the good news of Christ's resurrection. For the first time in as long as I can remember, I didn't see a single marshmallow peep. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but maybe for you. It's strange, isn't it? Remember to take some time to stop and, and pray for yourself to recognize this is odd. This is different. And be mindful that even when it's over, it may still feel strange and different. So let's take some time now to pray for the church, the church universal, our church here at Williams, to pray for others, and then to pray for ourselves. So let's go to the Lord and pray. God, as we come together this evening through the relative miracles of technology, Lord, we lift up your church both here at Williams and around the world. Whatever form, whatever expression, whatever tradition it takes, God, we lift it up to you, trusting that, Lord, where two or more desire to gather, that you are there. That you were with us in our homes. You were with us maybe in our cars, as we work in our yards, as we we're together apart. God, help us to, to keep our minds, our hearts, our spirits high and focused on you. Especially, Lord, here now as we stand on the good side of Easter. The good news of your resurrection. God, we pray this evening for others. Those who even in the midst of a worldwide global crisis, Lord, are experiencing their own private personal crises. Those who can't be with their loved ones in times of need. God, those who 
are having to postpone or forget altogether celebrations of joy. God, we pray for them. That even as we wait, Lord, that you make ways to celebrate, that you make ways to reach out, to help, to comfort. God, we pray for others. And Lord, in the midst of all this, we pray for ourselves. It's hard, Lord, to admit when things are difficult sometimes. It's hard to, to recognize when the difficulties are from outside of us and we can't control them. God, help us to not lean on our own power, our own understandings, but to trust you. Give us strength with each new day. Give us hope. More good news, God. Remind us of the greatest news we received just a few days ago. That you are alive and you are risen. So, holy God, we pray for your church. We pray for one another. And we pray for ourselves this evening in Christ's name. Amen. And now I just want to share a few thoughts with you out of Psalm 16. It's, a, it's an interesting psalm. It's the psalm, or one of the psalms of lament. But to read it, it doesn't sound a whole lot like lament. And rather, it sounds like the psalmist is, well, crying out for God's protection. Why do we ask for God's protection? I asked that question. I, I thought about it. Why do we? I mean, yeah, it, it's God. And w what does that mean in terms of protecting us? Well, God is all-powerful. Okay, that, that, that's true. But there are a lot of people who are way more powerful than me that I would never, never in all my life ask for protection. So why? Why? Why do we ask God? Why does the psalmist ask God for protection? Well, because ultimately, ultimately God, even in God's all-powerfulness, at God's core, is goodness and love and justice. And we trust that, that in that God will show us that goodness, that love, that justice, and that mercy. I know, maybe for you and for some of us, these last few weeks, and honestly, maybe the last few months or years, it's been hard to find trust in something. It's hard to trust in institutions maybe we once trusted, in which we once trusted. But especially these last few weeks, I've noticed it in, in postings on social media and conversations people are having on television and the like. Some people are suspicious of our government. Some people are suspicious of our medical professionals. Some people are suspicious of the news that this coronavirus is even real. Why are we so suspicious? I think it's because for so long, so many of us, we've all put our trust in things that inevitably have let us down. We've put our trust in people and institutions and authorities that really, when, the, when they got right down to it, they let us down. But the psalmist in Psalm 16 has perhaps put his faith in some of those things. He says, those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Almost sounds like he speaks, sings from experience. He speaks of the nobles in the land who, who put their, 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 their trust in God, the holy ones in the land. He puts all of his delight in those. He talks to God and says, you do not give me up to Sheol, the the pit, the de to death, and you don't let your faithful ones see the pit. Why does this psalmist sing about his trust in God? Because this psalmist knows ultimately, when all else fails, that the one thing we can always put our trust in is God. Now, friends, hear me say this: when I say the only thing we can put our trust in is God, that doesn't mean we. 
we blindly act out of what we want to call faith that we say oh well I'll do what, what I want and trust God and trust God and God will take care of me it's not what I, I mean at all I've heard that and I'm sure you have too from people who still want to carry on with gathering together for worship and those sorts of things do you not have faith in God just have faith in God that's not what I mean what I mean is even in these strange and unusual times when we're having to meet together through my computer in the sanctuary and over the internet that we put our faith in God even in these times that we we put our faith and trust in God when we worship from home on an Easter Sunday that we trust that one day this will all be over that one day we will all be brought back together in this place I mean how much of a of a microcosm of our faith is that that we trust that one day that that all of all of the the weight and burden of sadness and grief and sin and despair in this world will be washed away and we will gather together with Christ and the saints who've gone on before how much of a microcosm is this situation in which we find ourselves now and we just wait we trust because in the end as the psalmist says you show me the path of life and in your presence, God, there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. We trust God because at the end of the day, there's nothing else in which we can put our trust. We trust God in the midst of a pandemic as much as we trust God in the midst of a normal, joyful life. So friends, my hope is in the coming days that you'll continue to trust God. Whether the news is getting better or holding on or, heaven forbid, getting worse. You trust God. You hold tightly to one another. Pray for one another. Lift up one another. And put your trust in God. As we end our time together this evening, uh, I want us to end it the way that we always end our Wednesday evenings together, and that is by praying the Lord's Prayer. So if you're at home watching this now or maybe later recorded, feel free to pray this along with me. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I hope you have a good rest of this week. I hope to see you all again very, very soon back here in this room as we gather for worship again. Our prayers go with you this week and in the days ahead. God bless you.